Welcome all. Welcome to the burning issue of the academy. And today we are going to discuss a prominent issue which was in news on 3rd April, which was Taiwan earthquake. So before going to Taiwan earthquake, uh, let's understand the basics of why was Taiwan hit by this powerful earthquake, which was known that it has that intensity hasn't happened since past 25 years. And the magnitude was around 7.4, okay, according to US Geological Survey. Okay, and Taiwan, as you know, is a prominent uh, island nation. At one side, we have South China Sea. At one side, we have Pacific Ocean. So let's understand the comprehensivity of, comprehensivity of what is uh, basics, what is earthquake as such. And let's move on next to the concept of Taiwan's earthquake. So first, uh, let's understand what does earthquake mean. Earthquake in basic terms means shaking of earth. Now, what happens is that there are some disturbances happen on earth because of which earth shakes. And these disturbances are called as seismic activity. So what happens is that when a certain amount of energy is released, that particular energy causes tremors and shakeage of earth, which is called as earthquakes. So whenever we come to uh, earthquakes, the concept of seismology becomes very important. Okay. Now, what is seismology? Seismology is nothing but appropriately understanding the scientific study of all aspects of earthquake. So, uh, when we have earthquake, we will be having some measurements to understand what is earthquake. As you can see, here we have a richer scale, which, which is used to understand the magnitude of earthquake. So, apart from richer scales, there is another scale called as modified Marcellus scale. So, whenever uh, we come to the modified Marcellus scale, it is a uh, it is required to get the intensity intensity of the earthquake. Okay, just remember which scale for is for magnitude and intensity is for intensity is calculated by modified Marcellus scale. I hope uh, this particular part is clear. Okay, now let's uh, understand the next concept of Pacific Ring of Fire. So Taiwan uh, is a part of this particular ring of fire. Now what we see is that here we have a massive plate. Okay. Now what do we see is that at this particular plate here, the volcanic activity around 70% of active volcanic and seismic activity happens in this particular zone, which is called as Pacific ring of fire. Okay, I hope this particular concept is clear. Now what this specific ring of fire, it's a tectonic belt of 2,525,000 miles. Okay, and it's of 500 kilometer wide. Okay, and this ring has around 750, 715, to 900 plus active volcanoes, which makes it a hotbed of earthquakes and volcanic activity. I hope this particular part is clear. Now, let's uh, move on to the next topic. Now, what happens is that the Pacific Ring of Fire, whatever we see, around, as I said, uh, around 70 to 80%, and some books has also mentioned 90%. It's up to you, whatever you want to quote, you can quote, uh, but keep it, keep the range between 70 to 90, not less than that, not more than that. Now, what we see is that around 90% of earthquakes happens, earthquakes and various volcanic activities happens in this Pacific ring of fire. Okay. And even we have ocean trenches, which are part of this particular Pacific ring of fire. So uh, next, let's understand why Taiwan had become uh, prone to earthquake because it is a prominent part of seismic ring of fire which is a hotspot hot of seismic activity, okay? Now, what do we see is that this interaction was the result of Phil Philippine Sea Plate and Eurasian Plate and its collision and subduction and the geological, geological activity, which resulted into the 7.5 magnitude of Taiwan's earthquake. So the next uh, concept, what we see is that the collision and compression of these plates obviously creates disturbances, which creates seismic waves, which resulted into earthquake. So uh, what do we see is that Whenever we come to shallow, shallow earthquakes, shallow earthquakes have high intensity because the energy point is not that deep. It's, it's at the surface level. So uh, whenever we come
down to the uh, the various dynamics which are happening in the domain of earthquakes first let's understand what is seismic hazard ass assessment so seismic hazard assessment what do we do is that we prepare a hazard mitigation map for example if you take a map of india we'll prepare the various areas in which india is prone to earthquake okay and we classify it in various zones okay so these various zones what will what it will give is that it will given various uh, it will given appropriate plan appropriate uh, procedure that how to proceed with this particular earthquakes and it also gives us the various mitigation measures that can be taken and the infrastructure modeling that can be taken which becomes a prominent in this aspect the second more important thing earthquake early warning system so earthquake early warning system what happens is that we have uh, seismographs we have see seismographs which are placed and the seismographs are prominent in recording the in uh, the recording the intensity uh, uh, recording uh, predicting the uh, occurrence of earthquakes okay uh, so what we see is that the uh, pre uh, estimating or pre calculating the occurrence of earthquakes gives us a proper early warning system by this pro appropriate early warning system we can uh, plan accordingly what should be the way forward how can we come out of this particular earthquake which becomes the second most important aspect okay and next is the subduction zone of earthquakes so uh, let's understand what is subduction zone by an uh, appropriate diagram so what happens is that when two plates collide okay this is plate 1 and this is plate 2 so when two plates collide each other now what happens is that one plate subducts okay goes inside another plate okay after this particular uh, if you have two plates so what happens is that when these two plates come together one plate subducts the other plate now what happens is that this subduction causes thrusts thrusts okay now as we see in the second diagram as the plate moves the denser plate subducts okay and the uh, lighter plate it remains ahead okay so what happens is that okay so uh, here when the collision happens the denser plate subducts and the lighter plate remains now when this denser plate subducts here there are various tensions which are getting created now this tensions release seismic energy which results into earthquake now uh, as this uh, denser as this denser plate moves inside this denser plate melts and density differentiation is created which results into volcanic eruption so japan is a combination of this particular zone and this particular zone okay here half part of the japan lies here and half, another half lies here so this zone whatever we see this zone is called as subduction zone i hope uh, this particular thing is clear it's all about subduction zone so next uh, let's understand what is induced seismicity so induced seismicity indicates the uh, tension is induced by human activities by human uh, intervention now what do we see is that such as we have hydraulic fracking technique fuel injection okay even the reservoir even the dams have uh, caused a massive the displacement of under underneath fault underneath rock okay so what happens is that even this induced seismicity indicates because of human development human deep mining mining activities and human uh, interaction with uh, earth mass or the uh, continental plate or the oceanic plate results into these disturbances which are which is called as induced seismicity so these are nothing but the various keywords associated with earthquake assess now uh, scientists have discovered that most of the uh, engaged part of the Pacific plate are cooling off or contracting a faster rate than the older part of the plate. Okay, and it leads to increased stress accumulation between the plate boundaries. As I showed you in the subduction zone, how does stress accumulate over a period of time? So this is a comprehensive uh, diagram of the earthquake assess. Let's understand it. Okay, sorry. So as we see, is that the zone where disturbances occur. the zone is called as focus and it's also called as hypocenter i hope it's clear this zone is called as focus or hypocenter now this is fault induced earthquakes which happened in gujarat earthquakes okay in gujarat earthquake there is a fault called as allavan fault 
due to which this fault was displaced and this earthquake had occurred. Okay. Now, when this particular fault displays, what happens is that due to this fault displacement, energy gets transmitted across. Okay. And just above this fault, it's called as epicenter or the place at which highest possible destruction happens. Okay. And this focus is also called as hypocenter. Okay. And the epicenter is the place just above the focus or just above the hypocenter where highest possible destruction happens. Okay. And this, uh, this is known as this part, the subducted part, which has went down, it's called as fault scarp. So it is the fault based earthquake, no, not the plate based earthquake, which we discussed uh, with respect to uh, uh, Eurasian plate and Pacific plate in the case of Taiwan. But this is a different issue in which, uh, what we see, a fault, which is happened in the case of Gujarat earthquake, can be seen here. So these are the terminologies which becomes very important for prelims. And uh, a homework for you is that uh, I uh, personally urge you people so that you can cover the P waves and S waves, what are the difference between P waves and earthquakes, okay? That's the first homework for you. And the second most important thing is that you should also know about different types of volcanoes, acidic volcano and basic volcano. I hope this concept is clear to you people. So uh, thank you all. I hope this uh, session was comprehensive to you. Okay, and uh, just take best out of it as is in initiatives of free of cost. So I like to uh, please uh, like, share and subscribe our channel of the Academy and also click the bell icon and so that you don't miss any update uh, from the Academy. And uh, we have a number of programs as such with respect to mentorship, uh, answer writing and test series. Okay, and we also have interview guidance program uh, on one-to-one -one interview sessions. So uh, try to explore. So most of these in initiatives are free of cost. I hope it helps you and aids your preparation. Thank you all. Have a great day and thanks for joining us.